Hi, welcome back to my channel. I know it only feels like a few days it has been, but um, I just wanted to catch up really. So I mentioned on my last vlog that I did have a couple of makes to share. I've got a pattern. I don't think I've got any new fabric because I don't really need any fabric. I mean, do we need fabric? I guess I need it in my life. Um, yeah, and I've got a new machine coming, so I'll tell you a bit more about that as well. So should we do the pattern first? I saw this shared on Instagram. It's a Vicky Souls pattern. Um, I saw it shared a while, well, not a while ago, a couple of weeks, and I messaged her and said, when's that out? I need it in my life. Um, so I love the details of this blouse. Um, let's see if I can get into the line drawings. I've not sewn a Vicky Souls pattern before, but I've heard, had good um, like feedback from people who have. Um, I don't know if I'll make the collar as large as it is. There's a possibility I might make it without a collar on. I don't know. Um, but it just looks quite, yeah, I love it. I love the ruffles. I need to think about fabric. This isn't uh, going to be sewn immediately. Um, it's a one for when I've got a bit more time. So July is going to be a really heavy month for me because I'm full time plus a Saturday morning. So I'll only kind of have a day and a bit. Um, and I think this is about a 16 hour make um, and because it's going to take a lot of time to make I don't really want to make it and then be too big because I explained last time about my weight loss and things so um, but yeah so it's the Asalia blouse um, it comes in sizes 34 to 52 and um, so that'll be European sizes um, I'm just thinking I ordered it based on what I was, so I don't even know if that's going to fit me. I might have to kind of... Mm, don't know. Anyway, I'm just jabbering on now. Um, I'm just trying to get to the... So for fabrics, it says choose blouse and dress weight fabrics with the following properties. Lightweight, pliable, soft, without stretch, semi-sheer or opaque, um, cottons, viscose, cotton silk. Um, viscose or synthetics polyester I wouldn't use polyester it'd just be too warm um, and also batiste and shirting fabrics are recommended and um, we don't recommend for stretchy materials or structured fabrics like sateen or organza um, and that one on the picture is made of batiste and I don't even know what batiste is so if somebody knows drop it in the comments and let me know so let me see what we've got um because you choose your height, I've not, not ordered one of these before. You put your height in, and um, you put your I think you put your measurements in when you order, and then you sort of I've got it on um A O and then you choose your pattern. But to be fair, with it being a blouse, apart from maybe the shoulders, um it's just gonna tuck in. So that's a one to one to watch. It's not a one for now, um, but it'll be one for soon. Um so yeah, thought I'd share that with you. So um, I should say what am I wearing, I totally forgot on my last vlog, I was wearing the, what was I wearing? Oh, shirt dress um, from the Sunbeam book, The Modern Wardrobe. This is an indigo dress, but it's my shirt, shirt indigo dress, and I'm definitely going to make another one of these, because when I put it on, I think, oh, I just love that. So it's got the puffy sleeves, um, which I like, just took my flabby arms in, you see, covers that up. Um, just a bias bind around the neck um, sorry we've got people coming and going so the dog is a little bit barky today that's probably my daughter coming in um, so yeah what have I made so you might have seen me share this um, when it was really hot a couple of weeks ago I took a picture of this so this is the Friday Pattern Company Avenir jumpsuit which I did make um, hmm, it might even be two years ago in a chambray I totally, I was very early to sew and it's an easy make, um, but I um, totally misjudged the size. It was absolutely massive. Um, and then I just cut it up and used the fabric for something else. Now, um, on this is the old pattern. This goes from uh, extra small, which the bust is 32 to 33, up to a 4X, which is a 67, but I'm not even sure if that might have been extended um, more in the new the new pattern because it's been relaunched and um, so you can check that out on Friday Pattern Company website and um, it uses about three and a half meters of fabric I think let me just have a look it depends on your size obviously 
um, and the width of the fabric. I had I only had three meters of this fabric. It was from Pound Fabrics Viscose Chalice. It was two pound fifty a meter. I don't think it, I don't know if it's still available, but they've got loads of lovely viscose chalices on their website, um, and the link to their site is in the description box as ever. Um, and I know lots of you did get these fabrics, so I did it in this um, daisy fabric. Um, I did the longer length sleeves and I chose not to do it without pockets so it's literally just the pair of trousers joined to the top and it is like secret pyjamas it's lovely now with this you can wear it on or off the shoulder Um, I tend to wear well I wore this one from um, the other day and I had it on like on my shoulders um, and it's a raglan sleeve and it is such an easy make um, and there is, I, I, I just can't, do I revisit it? Do I not revisit it? And I thought, it's 2 50 a metre, it's £7.50. If it doesn't work, worst case scenario, you've got a pair of trousers. Um, but no, I'm really happy with it. And I can easily get into that channel and bring the elastic in. Um, so, you know, this is something I can, you know, sort of sit around and lounge around in. But equally, I've seen some really smart versions of it. You know, if you did want to dress it up, you can do. Um, and in plain fabrics like the one on the picture and things as well so yeah anybody else done it let me know and um, so that is make number one to share with you and the second make is the peppermint magazine paddington top which i've made previously and um, now that is a, another raglan sleeve um with a yoke and it does have a button down placket on the back Um, i don't have a thing against buttons you know it's just like I suppose it's a feature, isn't it? And I'm just not bothered about it. Um, so I had this fabric. I think I shared it in... It might have been my May sewing plans. Um, which was... I think it was a remnant from Stitch and Ink last year. So it's like a broderie, anglaise, embroidered... I don't know if it's broderie, anglaise, because it doesn't have any holes in it. But anyway, anywho, it is what it is. And it's white. Who knows how long it'll stay white with me. So I will drop a picture in of me in this. Um, because this kind of holding it up like this doesn't do it any justice so it has got quite big sleeves which are really nice and um, I did it in a like a poly cotton the first time I did it and it's really nice I have lengthened it because like I would always tuck a blouse in and I'd want to be able to sort of blouse it out and not feel like it was coming out and um, so I just lengthened it and then I thought I'll see what I need to take off the bottom but I think I have him no I haven't hemmed it, haven't hemmed it at all but to be fair it's overlocked and if I was going to just tuck it in does it really need to be hemmed don't know are you a would you hem or not hem what would you do Ooh, the dilemma so yeah so both of those are fairly easy makes I'm not going to lie I think I probably made them both before I went to the ball and um, I've not worn this one yet but I have worn that jumpsuit um, and it was lovely to wear on a really hot day but equally you could make it in something snugglier for the winter as well so um in terms of plans yeah i mentioned about machines so next to me here i've got my baby lock ovation which is a combined air thread overlock and uh, cover stitch so the original first baby lock that i got was an enlighten which i have one here and i really fancied the idea of having a cover stitch but when i didn't have this room and i was in the porch i didn't have room for separate machines um so i bought this one it was a year old i think from david Drummond um, and I've, I've talked about it a lot to Sharon on there but I'm just not using it enough because um, I'll, I, pr I prefer the Enlighten I've got to be honest it takes minutes to swap the needles around and things but I'm just not sort of using it as much as I would like to be and because I've the studio is gone I need to have like I use three screens at work so I need to have um, this room set up for that so my two screens are going to need to come here. There is going to be space for things in front of it, but this is quite a big machine. Um, so Mr Drummond and I, we're quite good friends. So I've been on the phone to him today. We've we've done a bit of wheeling and dealing, as you do. Um, so I've got a Faf Ambition 720, which is a sewing machine, an embroidery machine, which I, I'm go I keep saying this every time, because if I keep saying that, I will do it. I'm going to do more embroidery on. Um, and for moving around so tune and things i've still got my necky uh 204d which is an awesome machine if anybody is looking for a starter machine that does a lot but i just 
love the quality of what the faff does so like where i got the cover stitch to do sort of round necks on jersey and hems the idt the inbuilt walking foot on the faff i don't need to switch to that and um, so i sort of got it in my head because i've sold machines and things from the the sewing school that i was going to use that to treat myself to a, a faff machine to use more like on social sewing days or if i'm going to sort my friends and those kind of things and um, so i've got a faff 620 coming so um that's coming on thursday i think so some of the feet from this machine are compatible with that machine it's got an extension table and things and i feel like i'm going to be able to kind of use them all what i'm thinking is that I might set this machine up as an embroidery machine because I think I'll use it more if I have it set up and then I can put the 620 out so I can move between the two and then I'll have my overlocker and I think that's going to work really well for me because I think the overlocker can probably just go into this sort of space in front of me here and then I can sort of swing between them all I think that's going to work really well and um, so yeah I'm really pleased with it I was looking at the 610 um, but David knows me really well and he said I think some of the features you're looking for it's worth going for the 620 um, and he's absolutely right like the automatic thread cutter because my necky's got all of that um, so I'm, yeah, I'm really excited about that so Gal will be off in the loft to get the box for this um, and then I'll get picked up and swapped around so yeah um, sewing plans coming up I, I've mm, sorry that's I, I get, isn't really a conversation we need to have is it i'm having to rethink a bit because of like this weight change i don't want to kind of use fabrics that feel quite precious to me now that's not price wise that could be that like a, a print that i love that was like two pound a meter and um, and then need to alter them later but what i am thinking of doing is revisiting the hope dress and doing the version of it like this that I want to do with the shirt panel at the front and the back and the sleeves and lengthen the bodice by a couple of inches um, and I have got some like old distressed denim I don't know if you can just see it there up on that top shelf so there's some that I dyed pink on the end and then the one next to it and I think I might have enough in that fabric yeah. that I could do that because if it's shirt it's going to kind of move in with me anyway and then I could just run the side seams in on that so that might be something that I do start to work on um with the sharing and um and apart from that because I've got this fabric here which I bought from first for fabrics which was on my June plans but this is one of the ones that I absolutely love but I don't want to cut into because if I'm going to go down a couple of sizes um you know there's no point is there really I might as well kind of wait but I will still be sewing um, I have got some Suero pants that I cut out, which in my head I was kind of going, wanting to make these bigger and I started widening the seams um, as so I cut them out and I did some pyjamas like that and they're huge. So I may well recut them to my normal size of those and um, they're sort of red with a little flower on there in here somewhere um, and make those because they're kind of, you know, they can look smart for going out when they fit and if they're too big they can become loungewear and um, i mean i feel i sound like i'm going to lose two stone by next week i mean that's not going to happen but with this fodmap stuff and um, and being aware of my health i do want to keep going with that so i'm hoping within a few months i can have that weight loss gone which i've you know i've done before and um, and then kind of work more on things that fit me if i can keep the bloat and gone happy days you know work on fit i love the nina lee um park lane dress i've got a couple of those and um, i've also got the deer and door magnolia dress that i wear for special occasions now i tried zipping one of those up today i thought this won't go anywhere near me and it, it i nearly got the zip right up so i thought yeah the, this change of diet lifestyle is really making a difference and that was part of one of my decisions of of stopping the studio because i knew i was doing too much i was too stressed i wasn't getting enough rest i wasn't looking after myself and yeah something gives to me in that situation so I think that's it is that it i think so is that a short one it is but that's okay so let's chat talk more comments below and i will see you on my next vlog bye for now